So Joe Stunner Boxing, I hope you're doing well. Um, I watched uh, an interview with Dominic Engel and he was talking about this business with Anthony Joshua being trained, if only temporarily, by Ben Davison. And he was suggesting that, you know, we shouldn't be surprised if Joshua ends up uh, going full time with Davison, um, you know, ditching Derek James. Um, and he mentioned the fact that James has had a couple of fighters defeated recently. Errol Spence, obviously. Um, really no shame in getting smashed up by Terence Crawford. Crawford is a genius boxer. Um, but nevertheless, disappointing that he couldn't do anything with Spence. Um, and also more recently, Jamel Charlo, who a lot of people criticised him because of the way he lost. You know, he, he seemed quite timid in his, uh, or should we say, to put it kindly, safety first and I'll go the distance. It was almost like a journeyman's mentality. I'm going to survive. Um, and that was disappointing as well. So it, Dominic Engel seems to be implying, look, don't be surprised if Joshua ends up going with uh, with Ben Davison because, you know, I suppose he, what he was implying is that perhaps Derek James is not the trainer everybody thought he was and he's yesterday's chip paper so and also there's the you know the fact that Davison obviously is based in Britain and perhaps Joshua likes the home cooking um, doesn't really want to keep commuting to America I don't know look I think it would be a mistake for Joshua to to stop working with James there should only be one trainer one head trainer Dominic Ingle also mentioned this there should never be a chopping and changing all right you, you answer to one person. In the corner on fight night, there's one voice, and that's the trainers. I hate it when I see all these other people sticking their oar in or, you know, talking a load of crap over the, the person who's supposed to be the head trainer. Um, but, you know, Ben Davison, uh, I think he's a very good trainer. Obviously, he's had that success with Lee Wood. Um, but probably if Lee Wood lost, people would be dismissing Ben Davis and they'd be saying, oh, he's rubbish, you know, he was overrated all along, like, like that some people are doing with Derek James. I think once you start something, unless it really so glaringly isn't working, then you have to persist with it. You have to see it out to its, its potential, its shelf life. It's a mistake just, you know, cashing it in straight away. I think, that, I think that's a massive mistake to make. Um, so... In my opinion, uh, at, at the very least, Joshua should have a, oh, another year at least with, with Derek James. But as Dominic Ingle said, does it actually matter? Because he compared, say, Tyson Fury to Anthony Joshua. And as much stick as I've given Fury it's on this channel, it's always been for his out-of-the-ring antics. His, you know, the fact he avoided Usek for so long, he wasn't interested, he lies to the public, you know, and so on. But put him in the ring... When he's, up, when he's up for it, and he's a fantastic fighter. I've always said that. Um, that's part of the reason he infuriates me so much, is he's got so much talent. And there have been uh, cases, uh, well, maybe the last year, where he's kind of wasted it. He's, I certainly think he's wasting it with this stupid Francis Ngannou thing. But in terms of in the ring, in the boxing ring, when he's motivated, he's a fantastic fighter. Whether he's still got it like he had it a few years ago, I don't know. That remains to be seen. He's signed to fight Usyk. No pullouts, please. Let's see what's going to happen. Get him in the ring. Um, and as Dominic Ingle was saying, Tyson Fury has a fantastic boxing brain. He thrives on pressure. He, the ring is kind of like his sanctuary. Um, it's where he feels safe. I don't think he fears any man. I think he fears losing, but that's a, that's a different area of the psychology, if you know what I mean. Um, but I don't think he fears any man. And I think put him in a ring when he's up for it, and he has a fantastic ring IQ. He can adjust. He can, you know, uh, obviously he has the advantage of being very, very big and very, very sort of nimble with it, or at least that's been the case in the past. Again, you know, if you if you jump up and down in weight, um, you, you're going to take years off your career. I mean, I don't care what anyone says. You know, there's a reason why some fighters last until they're 40 or 45, or even in the case of someone like Bernard Hopkins, 50, and they can still do it to a good level. It's because they look after their body. Some people burn out very, very quickly because they shine extremely brightly, but they burn out quicker. Fury, what is he now, 33, 34? I mean, he's, whatever the case, he's still, he's still in terms of 
level of confidence, ring IQ, being able to adjust, to adapt, uh, to take on all comers, you know, and fight different styles. He's, he's got an extremely, extremely high threshold re with regard to those things. Anthony Joshua doesn't, okay? I think Anthony Joshua is actually quite an underrated fighter. He's two-time world champ. I think he avoided no one in his career, which I always you always get a big tick from me for that. But in terms of his ring IQ, in terms of his confidence, in terms of being able to adapt without someone telling him what to do, I think he's, well, he's certainly nowhere near Tyson Fury's level. Um, and in a strange way, because um, Joshua literally did avoid no one and fought everyone on offer and tried to keep his mandatories and honour his mandatories and, you know, protect all his belts that he collected. I've got more respect for him in that respect than I have for Tyson Fury. But who's the better fighter? Who's the more naturally gifted? Who's mentally the stronger? Without question, Tyson Fury for me personally. So Engel was saying it doesn't actually matter who trains um, AJ. And the implication seemed to be from what he was saying, it's got to come from within. And I think that's absolutely true. I really do. I think that um, I think AJ's issues are his psyche, psych psychological um, confidence level, self-identity as well. I've talked about this in other videos that I've done. Uh, he's got to somehow find himself again. and But he's chosen Derek, Ch Derek James and he's got to stick with him. To, to switch now to Ben Davison or anyone else, what are you saying that the last year was a complete waste of time? He's had two fights with Derek James already, you know, which is pretty good going. He's been active. Whatever you say about the guy, he hasn't looked good doing it. I think he's looked like a bag of nerves in a, in those two fights for long periods. But he got the job done. He, you know, he, he was kind of won a bit ugly against. Uh, uh, was the first guy he fought? Um, can't remember the guy's name now. You know the guy, the American guy who lost to Gillian White. It'll come to me in a month. This is what happens when you get into your fifties. Your fucking mind goes. Um, memory memory bank gets leaky. Um, and yeah, of course, against Robert Hellanius, yeah, he knocked him out. He looked very spectacular. But did you see the state of his face, his nose and his mouth? There was blood coming out of it. I mean, he was, he, he'd been jabbed. He said he'd been jabbed off in those early rounds. <laughs> you can't overlook these things. But he's, he's okay. He's keeping busy. So um, Jermaine Franklin, by the way, was the other guy I was trying to think of. Uh, but you know what I mean? It's like, you got to, You've just got to uh, stick with it sometimes and say, do you know what? It's got to come from within. It isn't someone else. It isn't an external thing that I need to worry about. It's what's inside. And maybe working with a sports psychologist would be better or something like that, you know? Um, but anyway, just a few thoughts. I, I, I hope he doesn't ditch the whole, all the work he's done with, with uh, Derek James and go for Ben Davison. Although I like Ben Davison, I think he's a good, good trainer. But so is Derek James. A couple of defeats by his fighters. You know, at the end of the day, a, tra a trainer can only do a certain amount. The fighter has to do the fighting. The fighter has to decide, am I going to let it all hang out? Am I going to give everything? Am I going to try to win or am I going to try and survive? Or Sometimes the other guy's just too good, like with with, with Crawford and, and Spence. But, but anyway, if you've got any comments on this, leave them below. Um, and yeah, as always, thanks for your time. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the like button and spread the word about Joe Stunner Box. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot and bye for now.